Hey guys, welcome back to our study in Matthew. We're in Matthew chapter six. I hope you've been enjoying the study so far. I always like to start out with just saying a prayer um, over the folks who are listening. And so let's just do that right now. Father, we just ask that you would bless each and every hearer. Lord, let this word be fuel and be food for the spirit and for the soul. Father, we just thank you for these things. In Jesus' name we pray. Well, all right, we're in Matthew chapter six and I'd like to pick up right away. Let me say a couple of things. Um, first though, it is really difficult to cover um, the, the, the book of Matthew in a short period of time. Um, I could probably spend, I don't know, maybe a good year on the Sermon, uh, on, the sermon on the Mount alone, um, if time were permitting. So I'm not going to be able to really go deeply into all of this material in Matthew chapter 6 and 7 and in other chapters to come, just because the material is so rich. That's why I'm going to encourage you to spend the time to get into the Word, to read it, to ask questions. Hit me up with questions. Um, you could private message me. Um, also hit me up with prayer requests um, as you go through the material. But the idea is to go through the material yourself. I remember uh, Bill Hybels, who's a pastor, well, a former pastor of Willow Creek Church up in the Chicago area. I remember hearing him say that one of his regrets in ministry was that maybe he spoon-fed a lot of things and uh, he would have preferred if more time was spent really teaching folks how to get into the Word themselves because you've got to get into the Word so that the Word could get into you. Um, thank God for pastors and teachers, but you know, the Bible says every uh, member a minister, every uh, saint is a priest, and every believer has that opportunity to uh, get the Word into their own lives. So I want to encourage you to do that. So let's look at Matthew chapter 6. Well, it starts out with um, Jesus giving some teachings and some, some warnings. And there's three different places where he says that we should be careful of, again, we get back to the theme of the heart motive, right? Um, be careful that we're not doing our deeds in front of men. And he specifies three different times. He says, take heed that you don't do your charitable deeds before men. So your charitable deeds, your giving, your offerings, however you're serving and people you're helping, make sure you're not doing that just in front of people so that you have the approval, right, of people. And he also mentions um, down in, in verse five, when you go to pray, there's some people who, who pray and let's face it, if you've been in church for any period of time, there's some people who have a gift of prayer. They are just eloquent in prayer. And, you know, sometimes when that person prays, you're like, oh, how can I follow that person? But it's not about that, right? It's about the heart. And it's also about the heart motive of the person who is praying. And so some people like to make a spectacle of praying. They want people to see, oh, they're so eloquent or they're just so spiritual. Uh, the same way, you know, same thing he's talking about in the giving area. They want people to see what they're doing. And then he mentions further on in, in verse 16, he goes back to the same theme about fasting, right? Which is a spiritual discipline of denying your body, denying yourself so that you could give that time of prayer and that time of devotion to God. And he says, look, if you're giving, go ahead and give. If you're praying, go ahead and pray. If you're fasting, go ahead and fast. But don't do those things so people will see you and see how great you are, right? He says in here three different times, he says, the people who do that, they have their reward. <laughs> That's their reward. Their, war their reward was the praise of people. Their reward was the praise of men. He says, look, shoot for a higher reward, which is the praise of God. And if you do these things in secret, if you do these things where people won't see, if you give where people aren't even aware you're giving, or if you fast when people don't know you're fasting, you still go about your business like it's a, a, a regular day. And um, if you pray in your closet where people can't see you, then God, who does see you, right? He'll reward you. And let me tell you, man, I'm looking for the godly reward. How about you? I mean, the world could give all kinds of rewards. There are lots of little shiny objects down here that serve as a reward. But man, let me tell you something. There's nothing like that godly reward. That's the reward that I want. And I know that's the godly reward that you want in your life. So let's, let's make sure that our hearts are looking to please God and our hearts are looking for the right reward. Amen? Amen. And so, 
We move on in the teaching as he talks about making sure that you are giving with the right motive, right? To please God and not men. That you are praying with the right motive to please God and not men. He said, watch out for these, what he calls vain repetitions, it says in, 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 in one translation, right? Don't just make repetitions of your prayers because they're vain. They're going nowhere. They're not having any effect. He says, but when you pray, pray like this. And this is where he gives the Lord's Prayer. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. I always say it in the King James Version because that's how I memorized it um, as a child. But he gives the Our Father Prayer. And, and you notice, coming off of that same theme of making sure that your heart is not about pleasing people, but your heart is about attempting to please God, how does he begin the prayer? With the Father. He says, Our Father who art in heaven. Hallowed be your name, right? Your kingdom come, your will be done. So he opens this prayer with a focus on the Father. Now, eventually we get to our needs, right? Give us this day our daily bread, right? And forgive us of our sins, forgive us of our debts, forgive us of our trespasses, it says in some translations. So we go from the focus on God and then, yes, God's gonna take care of our needs. He's gonna deal with us. But first, we put the focus on God. And notice too that he says, I don't want vain repetitions, why? Well, I believe it's because God's personal. You see, if God isn't personal, if God is just a concept or if God is just a, a, a God of wood or of stone or something you hang on a wall, then yeah, you can do a mantra, you just repeat stuff over and over and over, it would just repeat, 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 repeat um, without thought. But God says, look, don't you know, come to me like a robot just repeating words. Come to me with words from the heart. Come to me like a child would come to a loving father because that's how I want to relate to you. So come to me and talk to me personally. Be personal. I'm personal. I want to be personally involved in your life. I want you to experience me daily as I experience you daily. And so he teaches the our father. And then he continues on this theme of the heart. He gets into... a. Uh, uh, a uh, favorite uh, topic of ours, right? Which is all about our earthly treasure, right? So in verse 19, he says, don't lay up for yourselves treasures on earth where moth and rust can destroy and where thieves break in and steal. But lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven where moth and rust uh, cannot destroy and where thieves don't break in and steal. So he knows we're laying up treasure somewhere. You know, we're, we're laying it up. But he says, look, don't lay up treasure here on earth. Lay up treasure in heaven. And how do we lay up treasure in heaven? How do you do that? Well, it's, get, it gets back to those charitable deeds, right? It gets back to serving others, to serving God by serving others here in this world, right? By giving to others, by being in that relationship of prayer and of service and, um, and, and fasting and all of that. Um, Relating to God and then hearing his voice and then relating that out to others, right? That's how we lay up treasures in heaven. That's how we send treasures ahead rather than laying up the things of this earth. There are two different parables in the book of Luke, one in uh, chapter 12 and one in 16. The, in the, the book of Luke chapter 12, he talks about a man who has a bumper year of crops. So what does he do? He builds a bigger barn to hold more crops. And God comes to him one night and says, you know, you, you're, you're, you're really mistaken in what you're doing. You're a fool, the Bible says, because you are rich in all your crops, but you're not rich toward God. You know, lay up treasures toward God, not just for yourself. And uh, in, in chapter 16, he talks about uh, an unjust steward, right, who goes about laying up some treasure unjustly, and the Lord doesn't commend what that unjust steward did in laying up the treasure unjustly, but he said, you know, the children of light, meaning believers, saints, people who walk after God, right? Christians and, and believers, we ought to be laying up treasures justly. In other words, just as that unjust steward was strategic about laying up his treasure in the world, we should be strategic about laying up our heavenly treasure, right? We should have a strategy. We should have an agenda. We should have... Um, plans and, and thoughts and take action on laying up that treasure in heaven. That's really what our lives should be all about. And so 
let's make sure that we're not so heavenly focused that we're of no earthly good, but also the other way around. Let's make sure that we're not so focused on earth, on the treasures of the earth, on the things of the earth, on the rewards of the earth, that we forget the reward that's awaiting us in heaven. All right. And he continues teaching on the topic of focus, the eyes are the, the, the lamp of the body. So again, where's your focus? Is it on man? Is it on God? And those are great questions to ask yourself. And he goes on to speak about uh, money again. No one can serve two masters, for either will hate the one and love the other, or else he'll be loyal to, the, to, to one and despise the other. You can't serve God and mammon. So, or money, right? So let me just touch on that for a minute because there's always this tension about earning money and um, whether as a believer or as a Christian you should earn money or how much money or what you should do with your money. That by itself, my friends, again, could be a, a year-long uh, year study. This scripture is not saying that you shouldn't make money or earn money or have money. That's not what it's saying. It's not saying that you can't have money and God. It's saying you can't serve money and God right? You can't serve money and God. Um, uh, the, the church has lights that need to go on. Um, ministers have needs that need to be met. There are tons of needs that come into our churches and our ministries each and every day, real needs of real people that need to be met. And you need finances, you need resources, you need money to meet those needs. Um, and we, need, we have our regular daily needs that Jesus talks about in a minute that need to be met. So God is not saying don't have money or don't earn money or don't multiply your money. He's just saying don't serve money. Serve God and let your money also be your servant. Amen? All right. And then finally, the Lord ends on this beautiful discourse about worrying, which I'm sure none of you guys ever do, but I know I catch myself doing every so often, worrying about the things of the world, right? What are we gonna eat? What are we gonna put on? How will I make the bills? How will I grow my business? How will I grow my ministry? How will I do this? And Jesus says, look, don't worry. Don't worry about these things. Don't worry because the Lord has already considered these things. And he gives these analogies. Look at the birds of the air. They're taking care of themselves. Look at the lilies of the field. They don't toil. They don't spin. They're not trying to work it out. He says the just shall live by faith. People of God will, should live by faith, should live in trust in God that we don't have to worry because he says God already knows your need before you even ask it. He's way ahead of you. He's out in front of you. And so the key is to put our trust in him. And here's the, the heart and soul of this entire chapter of Matthew. He says, but seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things will be added onto you. You see, if we would just seek God first, if we would put the time in our lives to get into his word, to get into some of that prayer, right, we were talking about, to get into fasting or to get into worship, to get into serving God, to just upend our calendar a little bit. But give God some priority. Give God some room. Give God the, 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 the choice place in our agenda. Give God our attention and our focus. Remember the, the, the eye is the, 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 the lamp of the body. Where's our focus? Put it on God. He says, if we would seek him first and his righteousness, then he'd take care of everything else. All those other things would be added on to us. So don't worry about to, tomorrow. Tomorrow has enough problems of its own or today has enough problems of its own. Let's not worry about tomorrow. Tomorrow will worry about itself. He says in the Lord's Prayer, give us this day, right, our daily bread. This day, because sufficient um, for the day is its own trouble, right? And God's provisions are renewed every day. And so I hope you receive that this morning. I hope you know God is with you this day. As you hear this, as you watch this, as you experience this, God's spirit is with you. All you gotta do is just look up in your heart. You don't even have to look up like this. Just look up in your heart and acknowledge his presence. And God is going to carry that burden for you, amen? All right, well, as I always say, I love you and God loves you. Um, 
I pray that you'll have a blessed day. And I ask just to um, uh, share, share the love, share, give me a comment, give me a share, and please send me prayer requests or ideas and suggestions as we go along. All right, my friends, God bless you. I'll see you on the next video.